The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. Getting the most out of your inputs is important, and when it comes to seed treatments, this is no different. Shad Milligan of Syngenta Canada and I catch up in our latest Wheat School episode, where we discuss best management practices to get the most out of your seed treatments. Check out the conversation now. Uh, we, we, we would love to have ideal temperatures, ideal soil conditions, ideal environmental conditions when we seed every year, but unfortunately that's not the reality of the fact. So one of these things to get the best use out of your seed treatments is to actually start to uh, fundamentally look at your timing when you're putting these in. So uh, if you're putting your seed treatment into really cold soils that uh, you know the soil biology hasn't started yet, that seed is gonna sit there for quite some time. and that seed treatment starts to work when you, when you put that and plant that crop into the ground. So for instance, if your expectation uh, of seeding uh, March 5th or March, the end of March or early April, you're really limited because you may not have the growing conditions uh, versus something when you're seeding later and that soil is warmed up and those environmental conditions are actually better suited for seed germination, seed growth from that side of things. You'll be protected but that seed treatment lasts about four weeks and then it, it, it is metabolized by the plants. So from there, you need another line of defense. So that comes into being that plant established, you know, being able to fend off early season disease. And so really, uh, when you're looking at, at, at things to, from an agronomic risk management standpoint, it's really making a calculated decision on going in when to seed. And that's, a, that's really looking at environmental conditions as well. Uh, it's looking at the soil temperature to see if it's warm enough to go as well. And understandably, there's, there's other factors affecting that, but to really look at the best use of seed treatments and get the best use out of those, it's really looking into good agronomic conditions when you start to plant to make the seed treatments most effective as you, uh, as a grower. It, we have different environmental conditions when you treat, uh, and part of this is there's some small things you can do as, whether you're a commercial treater, whether you're a grower, as well treating on farm. It's some small things that make a difference when it comes to having the best experience with the seed treatments. And having the, the seed treatment warm uh, at all times is a very, very important factor for treating for uniform application. And it's as easy as taking the time to, to unbundle your, uh, whether you're using it from the tote itself or a tank, is taking that inside and keeping it overnight in a warm area uh, versus it leaving outside. Because, you know, even looking at the temperatures over the past couple of weeks, we're still in the minuses in some areas, but you're still seeing colder overnight temperatures. And that makes a big difference when it comes to the viscosity of the seed treatment in the morning. So bringing that into the shop, you know, you have a nice warm place, you're coming out, you have warm seed treatment, it flows the proper uh, way, it allows you a better experience with equipment you're using from a seed application side of things, and that makes a big difference And just, you know, uh, the level of, uh, of the job you're doing uh, for, for seed treating. So what about when it comes to storage and if people actually have that treated seed on their farm and it freezes over the winter, any, any recommendations as you're, because obviously, like we said, we want to get the best we can out of that seed treatment. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, winter, it's very cold throughout the year and you're, you're bringing, if you have uh, seed that you maybe cleaned in the fall, uh, put back into the bin uh, and you're looking to treat, uh, one of the one of the things that would be a good way to get ahead of the game is to if you are able to put air into those bins and start to warm that seed up and a few uh, there's a few years ago where we've had instances where those bins were frozen absolutely frozen and we've had to do this but uh, a good rule of thumb now is to start to run air air through that warm that seed up be able to have that seed flowing and if you don't have air it's as easy as opening the top of the bin and letting some of that uh, air temperature in as the days warm up. And speaking of that, when the treating side of things, when you're treating throughout the day, it will change from morning to mid-afternoon to the evening. So one thing to do is to make sure 
that you're going through and uh, possibly calibrating at those different times when you're treating your seed to make sure you're not under applying or over applying because what you'll see as well through the day, the viscosity of that product may change depending on the environmental conditions. One of the things uh, to be aware of too in the spring like conditions, you've cleaned your seed uh, in the fall, uh, maybe early winter, you've put that back into a bin. Uh, winter tends to be quite cold through Western Canada, so you're gonna have cold seed in those bins. Um, one thing to start to think about is that cold seed is hard to treat because you will have some trouble when the product hits the, hits the seed, uh, instances of flash freezing at colder temperatures. So you wanna ensure that you try and bring the temperature of your seed up to a temperature where the seed will be able, the seed treatment will be able to adhere to the seed itself. Uh, we do, the seed treatment, most seed treatments have built in antifreeze and things like that not to freeze, but when you're hitting that cold seed, that makes a big difference on the contact of the seed and seed treatment. So you don't want that flash freeze because what will happen is that you won't have the, the seed treatment adhering to the seed. So some simple ways of doing that, if you do have air on your bins, you're able to uh, start your fans and start uh, bringing a temperature up that way. If you don't have air on a bin, uh, what I've seen growers do in the past is just simply open the top of the bin, let some of that cold air cold air out as well as letting some warm air in to really raise that temperature of the seed. So again, when it comes to treating the seed with the seed treatment, that you don't have that super cold seed that we've seen in the past that will cause some flash freezing with the seed treatment.